Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. So as you sit up straight and open up this channel to the brain, in one slow, steady breath, as you inhale, you are going to lift those muscles, perineum front and back up at the same time. So as you inhale now, you're pulling that energy and contracting these muscles and you're locking that first center down and you're squeezing and you're milking this energy out of it. So it goes first center, then you follow your breath into the second center and as you follow your breath into the second center, now you lock this one down. And the way you lock it down is you pull in your belly button close to your spine, you pull in. So then inhale, first center, then you pull in the second center, you're still following your breath slowly and steadily, and then you pull it up into your upper abdomen and you're locking down the center here. Now you're squeezing all three of these lower centers and you squeeze these muscles, you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up. You follow your breath up into your chest, shoulders down, you follow it through your throat, straighten your spine, you follow it all the way up to the top of your head. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head. So then as you inhale, you bring that energy all the way up to the top, you keep following your breath, you lock all the way to the top, when you get to the top, now you hold your breath. And when you hold your breath, you contract those intrinsic muscles and you begin to lift those muscles up and you begin to compress those muscles and you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up into your brain. So then, why do I ask you to inhale and hold your breath? Now, this is an inhaling and turning purple and pushing. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. It's a slow, steady breath. If you follow that breath all the way to the top, either to the top of your head or you put your awareness where that pineal gland is between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Now, when you inhale, that inhalation is very slow and very steady. It's not a big inhalation push. It's a slow, steady breath, and you're contracting these muscles and coordinating it and following your breath all the way to the top of your head. And when you get to the top of your head, I'm going to ask you to inhale a little bit more, and as you pull up, you're going to lock these muscles down even further, and you're lifting them up. Once you lift them up and you have your attention, either on the top of your head or the, the space that your pineal gland occupies in space, I'm going to ask you to lock those muscles down and pump, squeeze, or push. And I want you to push that fluid up into your brain by squeezing the muscles. Not by holding your breath harder, but by squeezing those muscles. And I want you to begin to pump that fluid and begin to compress up against your pineal gland. few last points. When you do this breath, you have to demonstrate a will that's greater than any program. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. You have to be inspired, inspiration, the movement of energy. Next, it's important for you to keep practicing. Many people, they do it once or twice and they say, nothing happened, I'm going to give up. But my question is, how long have you been thinking and feeling in these loops and what is it going to take to begin to disturb that energy? So you begin to shake it loose. And once it shakes loose, and that sympathetic nervous system switches on, it's a moving freight train. It's a moving locomotive. And that energy is very intense. For some people, their body will do unusual things. That's information trying to be integrated into it. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. If your body does weird things, more than likely that's energy moving to the brain. If you have a lapse of consciousness or you uh, all of a sudden uh, find yourself on the ground, that's energy moving into your brain. It's happened to me numerous times. It's a sign that you're getting close or at least doing it correctly. We use the breath many times before we start our disciplines. Why? Because once this energy starts to move and a movement of that energy, once it reaches the brain, is going to create a positive charge in the head a negative tar charge at the base of the spine once it reaches the brain, now you're going to have an invisible electromagnetic field surrounding your body. And now your body is a magnet, and now you've liberated that energy that's been stored in there. That creative energy is now liberated for you to begin to create a new life, to heal your body, to have a mystical experience, whatever your desire is. So be kind to yourself and practice it methodically and slowly. You keep practicing it just like any skill, it is easier and easier. Good luck.
if the word meditation means become familiar with, right? Yes. Then you know people say, oh well, you shouldn't focus on the negative. Well, really, that's ninety-five percent of who you are, and you got to begin to dismantle or denature that old personality. Mm -hmm. And that means you're going to have to come up against the cravings that the body has emotionally. You know, like if it's it's eight o'clock in the morning and you're doing your meditation, you're normally in traffic and mm -hmm. you want to get angry, and your body's going, hey, you're off schedule. So <laughs> let me just find a, something that's mapped in the brain that I I'll bring up a past experience why you can feel a little anger. Well, now once you're become aware of that now now the game is on yes, right yes. because now you're working to become conscious of that and not go unconscious again and it takes an incredible amount of awareness yes it takes a great amount of consciousness and you can't have consciousness without energy mm. so you got to raise your energy in order to get to it. otherwise you're going to be consumed yes you're going to return back right so gosh so if you start becoming familiar so conscious of those unconscious thoughts they would never slip by your mind and check by you. Now, that is when you really yeah. catch yourself, right? Yeah. And the research shows that you can get better at this. You could actually sense the thought before it comes. So then you start firing and wiring new thoughts. You start thinking to yourself, who am I gonna be when I open my eyes? Mm. Well, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna make a difference in the world today? Mm. Who am I gonna be? Mm. How am I gonna love? How am I gonna give? How am I gonna serve? How am I gonna contribute? What, are, what things do I wanna really do today? Mm. And, and, the, and the act of closing your eyes and just thinking about and rehearsing what you're gonna do, yes. your brain doesn't know the difference. Yes. And if you get caught up in it, you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. Done it. Now the brain's no longer a record of the past. Yeah. Now it's a map to the future. Right. You are priming your brain and if you keep doing it, yes. The hardware will become a software program. You know what that means? Mm. You just might start acting like a happy person. Mm. Well, there's no surprise there. Mm. You install the circuits. Stress hormones arouse the body so you have your attention on your body. Stress hormones alert the brain so you're aware of everything in your environment, like an mm. octopus with tentacles in all mm. different directions. You gotta control and predict everything in your life. Mm. And if you're living by the hormones of stress, you're always investing your attention and energy into the known future based on the past. So you're on a you're on a you're on a line of time here in yes. a timeline. So then let's think about it. How are you gonna make thought more real than anything else? How are you gonna create from thought? Well, let's close our eyes. <laughs> let's disconnect from the environment. Right. Less sensory information coming into the brain, less distraction, as you said. Let's play some soft music in the background. Let's stick some earplugs in our ear. Whatever you want to do. Diminish sensory but now you're sitting down, you're not eating, you're not tasting, you're not smelling, you're not feeling yeah. So there's more, less, less sensory input coming mm -hmm. to your body. So then now mm -hmm. your brain waves begin to change. They start slowing down and you move from this beta brainwave pattern where you're aware that you have a body in space and time or your attention is on the outer world or your senses are giving you information. Mm -hmm. Less sensory information. Now your inner world starts becoming more real than the outer world and you're not the voice in your head that's always talking to you. As your brain waves change, you start seeing in images and pictures and symbols and less in that vocalization, that sub-vocalization. So your brain waves start changing the alpha. You're going to start creating, start dreaming, pretending, right? Yeah. So then if you say to your body, you're going to sit down for an hour and I know you're on a program because you wake up every morning and do the exact same thing and now I'm going to make you sit, just like to say to an animal, you sit. You stay, and your body's gonna say, I'm gonna die, my bladder's gonna explode, I need a coffee, I got a lot of emails yeah. to do. That's the program. And you say to your body, today we do battle. Mm -hmm. Today, this is it. And you sit through that, and you make your way, even though your body's trying to get up and you, you keep settling it back down, I'm telling you, yep. when you start your day that day, you will be more kind, more loving, less judgmental, more patient, more present, because you're mastering the present moment. That means you're not in the predictable future. You're not in the familiar past. You're mastering time. And so then, if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, and all of your attention is in the present moment, you've got a lot of energy to do amazing things. And you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. Greetings, everybody. Dr. Joe Dispenza here. Knowledge is the precursor to experience. And the more knowledge we have, the more prepared we are for a new event in our life. And if we can assign more meaning behind what we're doing, we always gain greater value. So I want to start off by talking about how most people live their life. 
It is a fact, scientifically, that your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of all the things you've learned intellectually and all the things that you've experienced in your life. In other words, your brain is an artifact. Now, most people wake up in the morning and they think about their problems, they think about themselves, and they begin to anchor themselves into certain feelings and emotions that reaffirm their personality. And since those feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, because that's what emotions are, then people begin to ground themselves chemically into the past. So then they think neurologically within the circuits of their brain that are connected to the past and they feel emotionally and chemically within the boundaries of those past experiences. And so then most people's personality or their state of being is defined by the past. And if thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, then how most people are thinking neurologically and feeling chemically are causing them to function as a predictable self tied to the past. Now we can call that, for the most part, our past present reality. Because once we anchor consciousness into the brain and body and into a state of being, then we could say then our behaviors, choices, the experiences that await us and how they are going to feel will become very predictable. And so people tend to think the same thoughts, they make the same choices, they demonstrate the same behaviors that create the same experiences, all for the familiar emotion that's called the old personality or the old self. Now, this CD is about defining yourself as a vision of the future instead of a memory of the past. So then in order for you to go from the old self to the new self, one of the ingredients that helps you to do that is consciousness. Now consciousness is awareness, and awareness is paying attention and noticing. So the more conscious you are of your unconscious self, the less unconscious you will go during the course of your day. Now I picked two very specific times for these meditations. The first thing when you wake up in the morning, I'm going to ask you to do the morning meditation because your brain chemistry is changing from melatonin to serotonin. And along with that, your brain waves are changing from delta to theta to alpha to beta, from your subconscious to your conscious. The door to the subconscious mind opens in the morning. So if you begin to think about a new reality for yourself. You begin to think about a new experience that you would like to have. If you begin to contemplate a new way of being, and you begin to take some time out of your busy life and think about some future experience that awaits you, the mere process of thinking and contemplation is the building process neurologically in your brain. And so we are going to ask you to think about a future reality that you may want to experience, some change in yourself that you would like to embrace, some type of event that awaits you in the quantum field. As you begin to think about and speculate a new future event, the frontal lobe turns on. That's the crowning achievement of the human being. It's the creative center. And as you begin to ask the what if questions, the speculative questions, what would it be like? How would it be? What future awaits me? What do I want? As you ask those frontal lobe questions, because the frontal lobe is connected to all other parts of the brain, like a great symphony leader, it begins to look out over the entire landscape of the brain, and it begins to select different networks of neurons that are connected to the things you've learned intellectually and the things that you've experienced as an event in your life. As the frontal lobe begins to call up all these different circuits, it begins to seamlessly piece them together to create a new level of mind. And as you begin to remind yourself of that future event, 
there'll come a moment when you'll get a vision or a symbol or a picture in your mind and we would call that an intention and as you begin to force your brain to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations you're beginning to reorganize the circuitry in your brain to begin to change the brain to look like that future event has already occurred now your brain is no longer a record of the past now in fact it is a map to the future as you begin to be defined by that vision of the future you're moving into a future present reality but that's not the end because in order for you to move into a new state of being you either have to begin to experience the event emotionally in other words allow the thought to become the experience in your mind and if thought becomes the experience in your mind the end product of that experience is called a feeling or an emotion or I'm gonna ask you to teach your body emotionally how that future event is going to feel before it occurs and as you begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion of gratitude or joy or inspiration a feeling unlimited feeling empowered your body as the unconscious mind begins to believe and accept that it's living in that future reality in the present moment and you're beginning to activate and signal new genes in new ways so that your body is now living in the future instead of the past so as the body moves into a new future present reality your biology begins to change because now you're in a new state of being once you're in this new state of being I'm gonna ask you to think about the choices you're gonna make to review the behaviors you're gonna demonstrate during this day one day one lifetime what experiences await you and how they would feel and as you begin to mentally rehearse what that future day is going to be like the hardware program in your brain by repetition nerve cells that fire together wired together, begin to change into a software program in other words you're able to reproduce that level of mind easier and easier each day I'm also going to ask you from this elevated state of being to remind yourself who you no longer want to be to become conscious of the choices you're not going to make in that day because the hardest part about change is not making the same choices you did the day before and the other difficulty about change is that we go unconscious so then if you're conscious of the thoughts that you are not going to let slip by your awareness that causes you to return back to the old self if you're aware of the choices you're not going to make in this day if you are aware of the habits and behaviors that cause you to return back to the old personality that's connected to the old personal reality in other words no longer blaming or complaining or talking poorly about somebody whatever it is and then you think about the experiences you're going to stay away from and the emotions that bring you to a lower denominator I'm asking you from an elevated state because you're feeling differently to look at the old self instead of looking at the old self from a lower denominator and a lower level so that process of being conscious of your unconscious self that simple process allows you to stay aware that process is very significant At the end of the meditation once you're clear of that I'm gonna ask you to remember that intention and begin to think about how you would feel if that event occurred and as you begin to elevate your state I'm gonna ask you to broadcast that energy into the field for whatever you broadcast into the field is your experiment it's destiny then we will move back into that state of being one more time and meditation will be over and I'm gonna ask you to get up somebody else the second meditation is a meditation for self-correction we will already be moving into different brain waves as night time comes along your analytical mind will slow down your brain chemistry will change your brain waves will change slowly from beta to alpha and so this will be a simple meditation for you to review how you did during the day now I want you to do this meditation just before you fall asleep at night 
I want you to sit up in your bed or sit up next to your bed and I want you to go through the meditation and when you finish the meditation it would be best if you could just lay down and fall asleep that way you're programming your autonomic nervous system and your subconscious mind even further into your future and because your brain chemistry is changing because your brain is changing in its circadian rhythm from daylight to nighttime you'll already naturally be surrendering into this and I'm gonna ask you to review how you did what choices did you make when did you fall from grace when did you go unconscious how could you do something better if you had another opportunity and then I'm going to ask you to put yourself back into that situation and rehearse a better way of being what piece of knowledge could you use as a precursor to produce a better experience what piece of knowledge could you apply in this event so that you can begin to change an outcome and as you begin to rehearse a better way of being you're beginning to activate and prime the brain further and refine it into the future instead of the past this is how we self-correct in other words if you saw yourself giving a public lecture and when you watched yourself doing it you were touching your face or sticking your finger in your ear if you observe that I guarantee you the next time you spoke in public you would refine your behaviors so that process then of going from the old self to the new self and observing how we did then allows us to self-correct and begin to reorganize the mind into the future instead of the past and then I'll ask you to think about how you would feel if you were able to accomplish it in a better way also during this evening meditation where you're observing how you did during the day I want you to acknowledge yourself for the right choices you made the better behaviors that you demonstrated the new experiences that you created, the thoughts that you liked about yourself and how you felt. And so take a moment during this meditation for you to celebrate the changes that you made. And that should begin to become the foundation of your future self. And then I'm gonna ask you to surrender the whole process to a greater mind and allow your autonomic nervous system to begin to program your brain and body into a new destiny as you fall asleep and the brain will consolidate those circuits neurologically so that your brain is now further installing the hardware into the future and the chemicals that are released that begin to epigenetically signal new genes in new ways then allows your body to be conditioned into a new biology the process is simple and it's a great way for you to move from the old self to the new self so I selected these times with the intention of you having the door open so you can begin to program your subconscious mind to work for you 